First United Methodist. How are you guys doing today? It is a very beautiful Sunday for our last Sunday here, and I'm so excited to be here again. I got to get a little closer, apparently. I got to, like, get really close. So I just wanted to remind everybody that we will be doing sanctuary worship next week. We are working through the kinks, guys. It is worship center worship, worship center worship. Um, and we are working through those kinks. So what you see on next Sunday might not be what you see the next Sunday. It's a work in progress always. Um, we love you all, and we're so excited to be worshiping you in, in the church. Um, we will have ushers and greeters training at 11 o'clock today, so please join us for that. And again, um, it's such a blessing to be worshiping with you guys, and I'm so glad to be with my church family. Amen. Amen. Um, I just want to say how blessed we have been that in four and a half months, there's only been one Sunday with rain that we couldn't have our service out here. So talk about God watching out for us and his people. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Amen. So uh, our song we're about to sing is Just Rings True. He is our cornerstone. He is taking care of us. Please stand and join us. Lift your voices to heaven. You got a clear shot with no roof. So let her go, people. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. And Christ alone, cornerstone. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Righteousness alone 
upon it and stand before the door. And Christ our Lord, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. join me in the call to worship a love that never ceases a hope that cannot be quenched a pursuit of reconciliation no matter these are the things of God then let us worship God and let us praise him again through song love divine all loves excelling join me for our morning prayer gracious Lord how shall we do your will today will it be in acts of praise in gifts shared in prayers lifted who will you lead us to serve help us trust you help us listen bless this community as we come together in worship encourage us comfort us unite us and make our joy complete amen okay you may be seated today that Pastor Mary is going to talk about salvation and when I was thinking about that I was thinking of ways that we are saved in life things that we 
we have in our daily life that can save us. So I put some things in my bag. Of course, it's my beach bag. Uh, let's see what I've got in here. Some things that can save us. Okay. I have this, but I'm not quite sure if it's ready to save. Oh, Lamont, will you help me with this? This is my floaty, so if I get too far out in the ocean, it's going to save me. Okay, we're going to see what else is in here. So Lamont's going to... You might want to take off the mask. There we go. Okay, so Lamont's going to work on my floaty for me. I'll see what else I have in here that will help save me. Got my sunscreen. Cannot go out without the sunscreen. That will save us. Okay, probably don't need a lot today. Okay, let's see what else is in here. Oh, I've got my Snickers. Now that might not necessarily save me, but if I get really hungry, it's going to save those around me. How's that coming, Lamont? Okay, well, I think what I have here in the bottom of my bag is the ultimate thing that I need to save me. Anybody have any ideas what might be in here? Any guesses? I think Pastor John got it. Maybe he peeked. Yes, that's my Bible. Thank you, Lamont. So no matter how much we have, how many floats, sunscreens, Snickers, candy bars, whatever it is in our life that we have that will come along to save us, what really matters is it, what is in here, the words of our Lord, that's what's really going to save us. Amen. Thank you, Lamont. Amen. Yep. Okay, will you join me in a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the things that we have that keep us safe in our day-to-day -day lives those things that keep us afloat, those things that keep us going when we're hungry, those things that keep us safe from all sorts of diseases. And Lord, help us to concentrate on you today and your saving grace. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. While the choir is assembling, I just want to give you a couple of items. Um, next week, we pray that we have an amazing opportunity of worship inside the building. Um, I'm just going to ask that you be patient with all of us as we reshape, reform, <laughs> relook, uh, reimagine what ministry is like. Also, um, I've asked Mary to preach today because I want you to hear that I love being a teaching pastor and part of the teaching is to help hear uh, some of the people grow in their faith so from time to time Austin and Susan will also be asked to share as they are processing their life call into ministry so uh, give glory to God in advance for what you're about to do and choir knock it out of the park
Good morning. Last week, Pastor John talked to you about the dream life. This week, I want each of you to know that you can have the dream life too. You have to realize how God sees you and allow him to become who you were created to be, who he created you to be. Let's start with the scripture, and then I'll get into it. I added a few extra passages, too. So, Romans 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, though through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to die. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now than that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And those last verses were from Romans 5, 6 through 11. Please pray with me. Precious Lord, you are almighty and all-powerful, and this is your word. Work through me so that others can hear how wonderful you are and how your grace is life-changing. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Several years ago, I heard a song called Diamonds by Hawk Nelson. The song says, he's making diamonds, diamonds out of us. He's making diamonds out of dust. He is refining, and in his timing, he's making diamonds out of us. I'll surrender to the power of being crushed by his love till the beauty that was hidden isn't covered up. Oh, it's not what I hoped for. It's so much better. I never really thought about God being a diamond manufacturer until I heard this song, and I thought, wow, that is so true. If you think about it, diamonds and humans are very similar. Just as diamonds come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, so do we. Our world places a high value on those rocks just as God places a high value on us. In the Bible, it says in Isaiah 43, 4, You are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. In Ephesians 1, 4, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. And in Colossians 3.12, you are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Diamonds and humans were both created by God too. But you are worth more than diamonds to God. God has even provided a way for us to go from the dust to the valuable gem he sees us to become. God sees the beauty you have within you. Michelangelo was quoted as saying about marble blocks, the sculpture is already complete within the marble block before I start my work. It is already there. I just have to chisel away the superfluous material. And that's the way God sees us. He sees us in the rough. But because humans were given choices, we made some wrong choices and we sinned. He made us good, but we messed up. We're no longer able to have a relationship with God 
but he still wants one with us. God provided us with a way. And John Wesley called it the way of salvation. It's a way to have a w right relationship with God. It starts with provenient grace, and it takes us to perfection in Christ. And John, John Wesley indicated it's all about grace. But what is grace anyway? I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, we used to say grace at the dinner table. It went something like this. God is great. God is good. Let me thank him for our food. Amen. And I thought for a long time that's what grace was. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> it is so much more. James Harnish uses this definition in his book, Discipleship in the Way of Grace. It reads, Grace is the undeserved, unearned, unrepayable gift of God who loves us enough to meet us where we are, but loves us too much to leave us there. Grace is the unique expression of the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ so that we may come become participants in God's transformation of the world. God's transformation of the world. Did you hear that? You can't pay for it. You can't earn it. And you definitely can't repay it. Grace was the key theme of Wesley's theology, according to Kenneth Collins. In Wesley's way of salvation, the first step is when God seeks us out. Did you know that God, the creator of the universe, actually seeks you out? He looks for you. Like those diamond miners go into the mines and they're looking for diamonds. Sometimes the diamonds fall off because they have been washed down. Other times we have to do even more to get to those diamonds. They have to blast them with gunpowder or dynamite. And humans are the same way. When God's looking for us and providing provenient grace, he does it through something very gentle, such as an infant baptism. Or maybe even when your parents are bringing you to church. Or if your parents didn't bring you to church, maybe someone else invited you. It also happens when a Christian helps a non-Christian through a difficult time and tells them it's from God. Unfortunately, not all of us, like I said, respond to that gentle pursuit. God doesn't give up, though. He goes out and he turns on the heat. And sometimes we have to go through difficult times before we accept the love of God. There was a lady that I talked to through the Kairos Prison Ministry, and she told me she was so thankful that she was arrested because only then did she respond to Jesus' call. The wooing of God, Wesley called provenient grace, which means pre or going before. It is the grace before we even acknowledge that God is God. It is prior to our response to him. It is the love we did nothing to deserve. We didn't even recognize God as God. As it states in Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We can also see it in the Bible in a number of parables. Jesus taught, like from Luke 5, 1 through 7, you know the one about the lamb that's missing? And Jesus leaves the 99 to go in search of the one. He does the same thing for us. Or the lady who searches through everything to find the lost coin. And that's found in Luke 15 as well, verses 8 through 10. But it doesn't stop there. That is just the beginning. The wooing is the calling. But when you respond to him, that's when you get into justifying grace. When we're justified, I like to compare it to a car wash. You go in with the dirt of the world all over you, but then God washes it all off. Just like diamonds have that 
sandy junk from the volcanoes all over them, and they get washed off. And then you can see their shape, and you can see that there's something beautiful that lies beneath. When we're justified, we've gone through, through God's car wash. John Wesley also referred to it as conversion. And not everyone goes through it when they're young. And not everyone goes through it that has been to church every Sunday for a long time. Conversion is when you actually respond and you realize that you really need God. And John Wesley didn't actually experience it until it was later in his life. He was already in the ministry. Another example is found on your keyboard. It's called the justification button. Have you ever used it when you're typing a paper on Word and you hit justification to line up your, your paper so it looks really nice and neat? That's what it is. Justification makes everything right. You see, sin takes us out of relationship with God. Sin is missing the mark of being in a relationship with God. But justification was a gift given to us by Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, we would not have the, the opportunity to be justified. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people think that once you go through that conversion, you're done. That's all there is. But that's not it. The grace keeps coming. God just has so much grace for you. But before you start accepting that grace, you have to go through some, something called assurance. And assurance is when you're like a toddler learning how to walk, and you take a step holding on to the piece of furniture, and then you venture out on your own with one step out in the middle of every place. And when you realize that you can do it all on your own, then you start walking along, and God, and you know that you can rely on God. After being justified, after assurance, um, I wanted to give you an example of it. My husband and I got married back in 1984. We literally had a car that drove backwards. True, true story, a car that went backwards. So we had to go out and buy a brand, uh, a used car. We didn't have too much money, but we got this beautiful blue car. It looked beautiful on the outside. Unfortunately, one day as I was driving home from Anderson to Muncie, on the interstate, it started smoking and spurting, and I, it really scared me. I stopped. I pulled over on the side of the road. This is before cell phones, and I got out of the car, and I... I didn't know what to do, so I started walking towards the nearest exit, which was miles away. But what happened is a man came and gave me a lift. We got the car taken into the garage. It got repaired, and then it came home. Good as new, right? Well, I didn't feel that way at first. I had to drive it. I had to get used to it again. I had to learn again that it was re reliable just like God's assurance. We have to exercise God's muscles daily. We can't just go back to the life we were living before. We have to get to know Christ better. Day by day, through Bible readings, praying, listening, being in community with other Christians, and following the teachings of Christ. And one more example. A friend of mine was a new Christian, and he was really wanting to follow God's leadings. And he's on his way to work one day. He's committed that every time he hears God's voice or what he thinks is God's voice, that he is going to listen. So he's on his way to work. He's all ready to go. And he feels God tell him to go back and get his jumper cables. So he says, okay, God, I'll go back and get the jumper cables. And he does and turns around. And I'm sure you guys are guessing it, but he found somebody along the side of the road who needed jumper cables. And that was the person that he ended up sharing his story with and bringing to salvation. But that's the assurance. He had assurance that God had talked to him that day. So he started to recognize his voice.
As we continue to study the Bible and as accept the assurance, we find ourselves changing and the sanctification process begins. The final step in the way of salvation is sanctifying grace, which continues to provide us with guidelines and with uh, notifications that things are things in us need to be changed. Day by day, God corrects you. Sometimes when you're reading the Bible and you have one of those aha moments, oh yeah, that's that's why I shouldn't do that. That's sanctification. That's when God is cleaning up the diamond and making you shine brighter and brighter and brighter. I met a dear friend of mine years ago. I have to admit, when I first met him, he was kind of scary looking. He had a lot of issues. And I met him shortly after he became a Christian. I have known him for more than 10 years, and I've seen him go through a tremendous amount of change. When we talk about our early days in Christ, he always says, you can see the outside improvements, but God is still working on the inside, and it's even better than before. He doesn't miss those things that he used to do in his prior life. He's now happ happily married, and he's still going through the sanctification process. It's not something that just happens overnight. Most people, it takes an entire lifetime to get to what Wesley called Christian perfection. When I, another thing about being in Kairos prison ministry, we have a meditation, it's called the wall. And the wall is about this lady who has been hurt so many times that instead of going out and being among her friends and other people, she walls herself up. And she gets to the point where her wall is so tall that nobody can come through her wall. No one can peek through it. She can't see anybody. But then someone seeks her out and throws a rose across the wall. And she digs through the wall to see who it was. And she can't see who it was, but she decides that she doesn't want to be alone anymore. That rose reminded her that she doesn't want to be alone. So she prays to God, and with God's help, she removes the rocks that she had used to build her wall. The rocks are the bitterness, the pride, the envy, and the anger from the experiences that she had had in her life. That's another example of sanctification. Sanctification can take us, like I said, through our entire life on earth. But it doesn't, it only ends when we get to Christian perfection. John Wesley described Christian perfection as when we learn how to love God and desire to only do what he wants us to do. And it says in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, and Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Well, as we started today talking about how we're kind of like diamonds, diamonds start out at dust, and God uses the way to draw us near to him just like we started from dust to grow us into a diamond. Although we when we reach Christian perfection, we have a value that exceeds any diamond. If you haven't found your way to Christ, he is still pursuing you. Turn back today. You will find him more than any value of any diamond. So why have I shared all this information with you today? I'm sure a lot of you, being regular church members, are already following on that path. Well, I created it for you because I want you to know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And it's not just coming to church every Sunday. 
somebody is out there waiting for you to touch them, to throw that rose across the wall, or to invite them to church. I want you also to know that you're still growing. Each day we grow and we mature and we draw closer to God. Allow yourself to be transformed and understand that we are all works in progress. The person next to you is a work in progress. And the person next to you is also a beautiful diamond. Thank you. I say a big amen. Mary, thank you for sharing. You couldn't see it, but I've had a smile. Watching what God has done in your life is doing. She lives love and she lives joy. And I, there's no one more excited to talk about God and share his word than Mary. Thank you for blessing us. And we're going to sing something right now. As soon as I get back to the piano, I'll figure out what it is. So jo I love you too. Oh, my Jesus, I love you. Please join us in song. Having some technical difficulties. All right, people. Who needs technology? It's my Jesus, I love thee. Let's sing together. A cappella, my Jesus. There we go. Ready? And. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign, my grace shall save thee, my stay. first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. Sometimes God has a plan, and it's different from our anticipated plans. 
That song I love to sing without any accompaniment. Who knew? Well, God did. And God made it available for me to hear you sing that song today. Because it's, it's the core of my spiritual existence. If ever I loved you, my Jesus, just now. Mary, I want to thank you for sharing in heart, in word. I would be a much better Christian in my life if it weren't for the obstacles of grace that are in front of me that keeps me from being in a right relationship. But I trust in God, and I trust in the favor of God to help me get through those times. Some of you are probably wondering, what in the world do I have in my hand? Well, it's not a stick, although part of its name is called stick. But I thought that God could use a little reminder that what we need is a little bit of rain. Not right now, but wait until we're done, Lord. But it's a rain stick. It's actually a gourd. But as you can tell, it sounds as though it's rain. I pray that God's grace will rain upon us today as we feel the presence of God. I'm reminded by a couple of people, Naomi, blessings to you as you travel back to Kafakumba, to the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, to go and share what you've learned here uh, and, and teach the people in faith. Uh, to Marissa and Austin, who are someday going to have a child, um, we pray that, you know, it's coming soon, so be patient with them. For all of us who struggle in a daily walk and journey, for all of us that have wonderful expressions in our daily walk, God empowers us to be the people of God. I know, stop preaching, just pray. But in my words... I hope you hear the presence of God. God does have a plan for us, and it's an incredible plan. So let's find out what that plan is and, and live it out in faith. Join with me and pray. Lord, I give thanks to you this day for the power of prayer, for the opportunity to hear your word, to sing songs of praise and affirmation and glory to you. Help each one of us as we recognize the grace of Christ so that we may be empowered to share the love of God in this world to others. And Lord, start paving the path ahead of us, preparing the people in advance so that when we come in contact with them, we will know that we are sent by you to share the word of God with them, for them, to them. Help us, Lord, to be reminded of your prayer, which you have taught us to pray in saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Mary, uh, you had one prayer before the meal. You forgot one. It's a very long one. Rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub. Amen. We're now going to take up our uh, morning offering. And so the, a bucket's going to come around where you can put in your offering or you can uh, mail it in or you can go on our church website pendletonfirst.org and you can donate there we thank you so much for your generosity the generosity that you've that you've shown over all this time and the generosity that you're continuing continuing to do marissa and i are so blessed by each and every one of you and so we we thank you for your personal generosity toward us for the gifts that you've given to us for, for Aria, who's on her way. 
and for just being so welcoming to us after a little over a year. This has been an incredible journey, and I am so looking forward to what God is going to continue doing through each and every one of you, with you, and with us. We're on an amazing journey together, as Mary preached about. And so continue, continue being part of it. And if you are not part of the journey of being a new creation, it can be tough. But it's oh so worth it. So consider that today. We thank you for being here. We thank you for all that you are doing, for all your patience and your grace, and for accepting the grace of God who is just covering us with it. Amen. It is such a blessing to be a part of this. As the song says that we're about to sing, and take this literally, we stand and we lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. May we be strong together, change a life this week for God's glory. Let's stand. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord
now as you leave this place, remember your grace-filled people. Be blessed. Amen. Holy is the Lord.